I have a few things to say which will update you a little bit on where things sit. First of all, to repeat something that I think everybody knows. In the last negotiation, there was a year-long lockout. The result was a salary cap that um, the owners wanted and the players eventually agreed to. It incorporated a vast reduction in player salaries, which has been in effect throughout the term of this agreement. And when I say a reduction, what I mean is a vast reduction, both from what they were and what they would have undoubtedly been if you hadn't had the salary cap. That's why the owners wanted the salary cap. Um, the second thing is that during this period, and this is a good thing, the league has had record growth. I believe there have been record revenues every year or virtually every year with a big revenue jump um, the last two years. And so given those two things, the players' overall feeling has been that they are not prepared to and don't feel it's appropriate to see an absolute further reduction in their aggregate salaries. When the owners have the system they want, and that incorporates already large reductions in player salaries, um, then the question is, if there are further issues, to where do we look for the responsibility for those? Having said that, what the players did was to make what we believed then and now a very forthcoming proposal to the owners in an effort to try and find an agreement. And that was to limit future salary growth to a specified dollar number for the next three years. Um, and that this represents, as I think, again, everybody knows, a real concession from existing terms and conditions of employment. It's not a modification of a proposal that's made um, in bargaining. And that assuming revenues continue to grow, and we think they should, and hopefully the owners believe that the game is on the cusp of something big, big and is going to grow, that they'll be able to, to handle that job well, then it goes without saying that under the player's proposal, the player's share would fall. Under our proposal, in addition, we had suggested initially that the player's share would snap back, if you were, if you will, or revert to 57% in the fourth year. The theory is that the player concessions in the first three would allow the owners with revenue growth to grow their way out of whatever problems um, they perceive. The owners objected to that. Gary has said that the 57% is not sacrosanct and nobody's entitled to it in perpetuity. Of course, he's right about that, but similarly, nobody's entitled to a salary cap in perpetuity. We're trying to find a way to reach an agreement everybody can live with. Um, but given their object objection to that, and after a lot of work over the last two days and very extensive discussions with the players, not only that were in New York, some 12 or 13 of them, but some very long, a very long conference call with more than 60 players on the phone, executive board, negotiating committee, and others, we came to the conclusion that the best way to move this process along was to address the fourth year in our proposal. And accordingly, what we did today was to propose several concepts for the fourth year that would allow the fourth year to be something less than 57% of revenues. Um, we provided the owners with these proposals, or these concepts, if you will, prior to making a specific dollar proposal because we wanted to discuss them with them. We wanted to see which ones might be more pal palatable, what would be the best road to try and reach an agreement. And our belief was that if we can find an agreement on this fourth year and get past the 57% is not sacrosanct issue, that might pave the way, if you will, for making progress on the remaining differences between us. Unfortunately, so far at least, um, that proposal we made today did not bear fruit. The response that uh, was made to us is that if the players are not prepared to agree to an immediate reset in their aggregate salary levels, that is to say, as we understand it, a meaningful absolute reduction in the player's share in dollar terms for next year as compared to last year, that 
they see no point in discussing or responding to the proposals that we put forward um, at the meeting today. Um, we have advised the commissioner and Bill Daly today that players, staff and players will be in New York for the next two weeks. Indeed, there's a player executive board negotiating committee meeting scheduled for the 12th and 13th in New York. Um, and therefore, we are available to continue meeting. At this point, the talks are recessed. Um, and we will not be discussing these issues again unless and until um, there's an indication from the NHL that they are prepared to do so. Hopefully that will come soon. Let me go back to a more global picture of things for a moment, all right? Overall, players came in to bargaining with the following in mind that we think not only makes the most sense for the industry, but gives us far and away the best shot at making an agreement. First, as I said before, that while they are not prepared to absolutely reduce their salaries, they are prepared to substantially limit the growth in salaries for a significant period of time. And as I said before, that means that as growth continues, the player's share will fall. Second, we believe that the revenue sharing proposals we have put forward, about which there has been virtually no discussion, are meaningful and very important to the future of the game. Specifically, we suggested creating an industry growth fund of at least $100 million, and today we suggested that perhaps that was not quite enough, and maybe it ought to rise to 120 or rise to 120 million a year over time. That could be utilized directly to assist the owners and the franchises that need help and figure out a way to put plans in place so that whatever ails the industry can be addressed specifically and directly. We have said that we want to partner with the high income teams in doing this. A limit on the growth in player salaries which produces substantial dollars is part of the equation, but it's only part of it. And so far, at least, we do not have an indication that any additional revenue sharing will be forthcoming from the stronger markets to assist in the problems that um, have been addressed by the NHL. That's too bad. It's disappointing. We would like a partner in this effort. Um, in fact, as I think those of you know, at least under the owner's original proposal, we haven't run the numbers yet precisely on the last proposal, the reductions in player salaries team by team meant that there wouldn't be any revenue sharing that would not be paid for directly by reductions in player salaries. Why did we do these things? We have two goals. Obviously, we want to make an agreement. We want to make it as fast as possible. Nobody wants to see an interruption. Nobody wants anybody to be without NHL hockey. But secondly, we want to get us out of this cycle we're in, where every time the proposal is, you have a salary cap, gee, it's too high. It has to be something less. We don't think you can do that with the same prescription. We tried that once. It's been tried in the other sports too, and what happens is every time the owners say it has to be more. And I repeat what some of you have heard me say before, those of you that have been here, the only sport of the four major team sports in North America which is stable on a labor relations basis is baseball. And it didn't come easy, but it did come with much more enhanced and sophisticated revenue sharing and an industry growth fund. And you just don't hear complaints out of baseball about troubled franchises anymore. And every time you hear of a sale, it seems like a heck of a lot more money than you thought it was going to be. Gee, I'd like that for hockey. Wouldn't that be great? 
then we wouldn't be here every so many years doing this. Um, so that's the goal. Um, on the good news front, we have reviewed preliminarily the financial information we got from the owners this week, which relates to last year's numbers, 2011-12. And there's nothing in there which changes our view of the industry. And as a matter of fact, it, it appears things are somewhat better. That's good for everybody. Um, last thing I would say is that if there is a hiatus, before we resume discussions about the core economic issues, we've suggested that we meet on the other issues, the non-economic issues about which there have been a lot of discussions. So far, we do not have an agreement to do that. Um, hopefully, that will be forthcoming in one form or the other. Um, so we'll be prepared to resume when they are. Hopefully, that won't be too long. And as I've said to many of you before, negotiations are one day at a time. If it doesn't work out today, then you try and figure out something different tomorrow and the next day and the next day. And you keep that up until you find a way to make an agreement. So that's essentially where uh, we are now. There were two players with me today. You see them up here. Um, the reason there were not more, of course, is it's on Friday of a holiday weekend. I expect that uh, we will have significantly larger group of players back as soon as we resume, and hopefully for that will be the first of the week. Um, questions? When you're talking about the salary cap also not being an impediment, um, is, is there is the discussions right now, is the salary cap still in play? Yes. Okay. The, the, the players have said essentially the following, that we know that the salary cap is very important to the owners. So whether or not the players think it's a good idea or whether or not they believe it's in their best interests, they're prepared to make a deal which incorporates it if there's one to be made. Can you talk about the various scenarios that you brought up in terms of that fourth year? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, sure. Um, it was essentially as, as follows. Um, that perhaps what we could do with the fourth year is peg the player's share, whether it's in dollar terms or whether it's in percentage terms, to some specific revenue level which is reached. So if we reach so much revenue, it would be this much. If we reach another level of revenue, it would be that much. Another idea we floated is that maybe we could have, <coughs> excuse me, I apologize, mutual options for a fourth year. Um, in which if the players exercise the option, it would be on terms more favorable to the owners, and if the owners exercise the option, it would be on terms more favorable to the players. Um, and there obviously are some practical issues you have to work through with that approach, but it gives both sides a lot of flexibility. Another idea we floated is since they are interested in a longer term agreement at this point than the players are, is that maybe if we move in that direction, we do a reset. And I use that word specifically because Gary's used it. And a reset would essentially mean that perhaps we do something like we did the last time. That in the fourth year, we would go to a specified percentage given certain revenue levels, and then that, that percentage would change over time as revenues change, which is the concept that's in the current agreement. Now, these are all ideas, and all of these ideas have, have you know, flexibility in them, and there, there are some moving parts you could change. And we had hoped, and I still hope, that at some point or another, one or more of them may be of some interest to the owners, and we can get over the structural hurdle of how long the agreement's going to be. We thought that indicating that the players were willing to take less than 57 percent in the fourth year uh, was a meaningful move in the owner's direction. The response was what I indicated before. So best I can tell you. What explanation have they given you as to why they're not willing to move off of you know, their immediate salary reduction? whether it be in straight-up rollback or just via escrow? It is, it is essentially that they believe that the realities of the world um, uh, push them in that direction or require them to have that view. I, I don't want to speak for Gary. He, he can speak for himself, but, it, but it's essentially that. They want a reduction. 
an absolute reduction in the amount that they pay out. When you're at a crossroads like this, do you think it would be tough to get on to those secondary issues, or is it easy to push them aside? And I don't think it is tough to get onto it. I mean, you, you have a general understanding in labor relations that nothing is agreed until everything is agreed. And what I mean by that is if, if you have an agreement that, you know, we're, we're going to have hamburgers on Thursday in players' locker rooms, you have that agreement, but it's not an agreement that's enforceable until everything is agreed. And there have been a lot of discussions about a lot of these day-by-day -day issues whether it's travel, whether it's ice conditions, whether it's health and safety, whether it's scheduling, there's a whole raft of things. And my experience is that if you can put some of those to bed, even if it is doing that with some limitations or saying we can do this if, it, and then you leave the if out there, um, that that's a good thing to do. And I'm hopeful that, that sooner or later we'll get back to that. As of today at least, uh, there's not an agreement to proceed on those. I, I think the answer to that is if you can get an agreement on the big conceptual issues and you're not trying to change too many moving parts, that it can be done reasonably quickly. The other thing is, is that if you get what the negotiators believe is, an, is a, a basic understanding, then the rest of it can be done pretty quickly. In addition to that, you know, as long as you have a relationship so that you believe the other side um, is going to hold to its understandings and they believe you will, then that sort of alleviates the pressure to a limited extent about um, whether or not somebody's going to take concerted action. In this case, that's the labor law term for a lockout. Does that relationship still exist in your mind? Oh, I certainly hope it does. With talks recess, do you see any way a deal can be done now by the 15th? Yes. Sure for the reasons I just articulated. What, what will have to happen for the talks not to be recessed? To be resume, I guess. As what will have to happen is somebody will have to say we're ready to resume. We've indicated that we are, and I assume that, you know, over the next several days, there'll be some discussion about that. Uh, we'll see. So, so who elected to recess? The owners elected to recess? Yes. So it could be either party could pick up the phone and say. Hopefully. Gary and I have done this enough times that nobody's going to stand on ceremony. Okay, at least I would like to think that, and I and I hope it's true. I think it's true. The fourth year uh, was was pushed or the the question um, in a general sense is what will be the the determining factors about what the player's share will be in the fourth year, all right? Or from the owner's standpoint in the fourth or later years, okay? And that's uh, an issue. We had proposed initially, the players believe it was appropriate and still do, that by that point we ought to be able to snap back to 57% that we will have given at the office, so to speak, once again in terms of limited salary growth. Um, and the owners objected to that. What we did today was an effort to bridge that in the hopes it would help us on the other issues. Have you indicated that they'd be very happy to take it three years the way, the way without going through? Has not been discussed. In your previous experience, did you get to an impasse like this, I guess the whatever you want to call it, or a recess? Does that hamper talks? Could that help expedite things? I mean, you never know. You never know. First of all, an, an, an impasse, just to let you know, is a labor law term of art. and. So I'm not going to respond to that specific term. Look, you get to times in collective bargaining in which one side or the other is not prepared to have further discussions for whatever set of reasons, and you have to get through them. So you know, it, it's hopefully it won't take very long. We'll see. So the, by focusing on the fourth year, you didn't concede anything in the first three years, like like their their vision. Of no, the, the, the years. as I said before, the suggestion was that if we can get over the fourth year and their objection to the 57% snapback, that would give us an opportunity to move forward. So you wanted to get an agreement on the fourth year and then revisit the other three? 
at, we wanted to get an agreement on the fourth year, at least in concept, and then take stock of where we are and see whether that put us in a position to bridge the gaps. Yes, sure. In, in trying to avoid the lockout cycle as well, uh, while you're trying to come to this deal, why did they shorter Now well, that's a, a different issue, and there are two issues involved in, in that. One of which is, I'm not sure our ability to predict the future is very good. And you ought to be able at some point, reasonably close, to, to consider what's happened, to see if revenues really do go up or if they don't, and if so, by what amounts and how that affects, affects the overall business. Secondly, you're dealing with professional team sports. And what that means is that the players whose contracts will be, individual contracts will be governed by this agreement, turn over very fast. And once you get past five years for sure, you have a different group of players than you have now. And there's a question as to whether we ought to be bargaining for them. We think that um, three years with a fourth year option is better. And if you look at overall collective bargaining agreements, in, in most places, in most industries, most of the time, you know, two or three years is, is gonna be the norm. I don't know that. Okay. Your emotions. Hmm? Your emotions are disappointed. Look, I, I would dearly like every day to make an agreement that day. I understand how the process works. And when I say, as I have any number of times, um, you take it one day at a time. And if it doesn't work today, you try and figure out a way differently tomorrow. And uh, hopefully, eventually, you get to the point where you find a way to do it. I mean that literally. You know, it, it, it doesn't pay to get up and down. And so I try not to. John, it's a long weekend, obviously. Do you, are you prepared to talk to Gary during the weekend? If he wants, sure. Okay, it's, he's gonna call you. You're not gonna pick up the phone. What? You're not gonna be the if, one. If I have something to tell him over the weekend, I'm not gonna stand on ceremony. And I assume if he has something to tell me, he's not gonna stand on ceremony either. At least I hope that we're, we're professional enough to do that. I think we are. Okay. Thank you.